What exactly did the Prime Minister know about allegations relating to ex-Tory whip Chris Pincher? We're down as more men make claims against Mr Pincher, claims he always denied. Tonight, questions mount for the PM. Also ahead. TV Evening News with Lucrezia Millerini. Good evening. Boris Johnson was aware of concerns about the conduct of Chris Pincher when he was made a minister. Downing Street admitted today over the past few days, number 10 and a string of government ministers have been stating that Mr Johnson had not been aware of any specific allegations. That line has now changed, putting the prime minister under more pressure. Well, the scandal started last week when Chris Pincher stood down as Deputy Chief Whip over allegations he'd groped two men. And today, ITV News heard from another man who claims he was also groped by the Tory MP. Here's our political correspondent, Carl Dinan. Well, let's go to our political editor, Robert Peston, who is in Downing Street for us this evening. Robert, how serious is this getting for the Prime Minister now? Uh, pretty serious. Police investigating the deadly shooting at a shopping centre in Copenhagen say they don't think it was terror related. Two Danish teenagers and a Russian man were killed after a gunman opened fire at random yesterday afternoon. A video has emerged apparently showing the armed suspect before the attack. The 22-year-old man has been charged with murder. From the scene, our correspondent Rachel Younger sent this report. Well, here at least one person has died and three others were taken to hospital after a gas explosion and fire at a block of flats in Bedford. Firefighters described the scene as they arrived as an inferno. Well, Elodie Harper is there tonight. Elodie, authorities are warning there could be more victims yet to be found. Yes. The BBC has admitted that it did receive multiple complaints about DJ Tim Westwood, despite saying that it received none at all. The former BBC DJ stood down from his show on Capital Extra in April following accusations of sexual misconduct. He denied all the allegations. Are in at least seven people have been killed in an avalanche caused by a large part of a glacier breaking off in the Italian Alps. Footage captured the moment of the collapse on the area's highest mountain yesterday. Rescuers are still trying to find 14 people who are missing. Ian Woods has the latest. There's plenty more to come on the ITV Evening News, including... Well, I'll be back with that and more after the break. Welcome back. Beef is off the menu as the cost of living crisis starts to bite into school dinners. A survey of school caterers in England and Wales found nearly all are experiencing food shortages and higher prices. Well, that's leading to changes to what they can serve and to concerns about the impact on children's nutrition, as Martha Fairley now reports. <laughs> Well, spiralling inflation is badly affecting many other businesses and a record number have warned they'll be putting up prices in the next year. The British Chambers of Commerce says businesses will go bust unless the government does more to help. Well, our business editor, Joel Hills, is here. And Joel, growing concerns about inflation then? Look, I think taming inflation is bringing costs, everything from energy bills to salary. Same for businesses here. It wants the Chancellor to cut taxes and to make it easier to recruit from abroad. The government has a different view of this. The Treasury model directly, but certainly for their customers and for their... Right, Joel, thank you. Tributes have poured in for an 11-year-old schoolboy who died after being swept out to sea in Pembrokeshire on Friday. Zach Tom. Police have made several arrests after fuel protesters targeted motorways and major routes across the UK. A series of rolling go-slow roadblocks uh, road were held as part of a campaign calling for a cut in fuel duty. Well, Hannah Tom You're watching the ITV Evening News. Here's what's still ahead before Emma Dale. First, the successful and embarrassing hacking of the British Army's Twitter and YouTube accounts at the weekend was another reminder of how vulnerable organisations are to cyber attacks. And an ITV News investigation has revealed huge variations on the amount being spent on protecting public institutions like councils, hospitals and government departments. It means some organisations are highly vulnerable, which puts the vital services we rely on at risk. Sam Holder has this special report. 
I mean, Sam, what you've uncovered here is this huge disparity in spending by councils on cyber security. Is this something we should be really worried about? Yeah, that's right, Lucrezia. But consistency of public services when it comes to dealing with uh, Twitter and YouTube pages were hacked. And when I asked various public... In Sam, thank you. Let's get an update on what is making the news tonight and questions... About well, we can get the latest on that breaking story now from our US correspondent, Emma Murphy. Emma update, and you can follow the latest on our website, itv.com slash news. Next tonight, how the avian flu outbreak is putting some of the UK's endangered birds at risk. In the past few weeks, it's been spreading rapidly across the UK. The Farne Islands off the Northumberland coast were forced to close yesterday over fears of the disease spreading. Elsewhere, several reserves have closed around Scotland, including Noss in Shetland and the Isle of May, uh, which were closed last week. Well, Bass Rock was also closed last month. From there, our Scotland reporter Louise Scott has the details. All clubs in the top two tiers of English football can now apply to operate licensed safe standing areas next season. Top All British hopes of single success at this year's Wimbledon now rest in the able hands of Cameron Norrie. The British number one is through to the quarterfinals for the first time after a steady rise in the rankings over the past two years. Ahead of his big moment, the unassuming 26-year-old told ITV News he is loving all the attention when well, he spoke to our reporter, Chloe Keady, who was at Wimbledon tonight. Chloe. And Christian Eriksen has agreed to join Manchester United as he continues to rebuild his career. The former Tottenham to women's football now. And the Euros kick off in just two days' time, promising to be the biggest and best tournament yet. As hosts, England play the first match against Austria on Wednesday night. Northern Ireland are in the same group and open their tournament on Thursday against Norway. Well, in total, there are 16 teams in the finals with the games played at some of the biggest stadiums in England. And as our sports editor Steve Scott reports, it is a big change from the last time the country hosted the event. Well, coming up just before Emma Dale at 7.30, will join me and Becky in just a few moments. Hello again, welcome back. Weather records have already been broken this year here and around the world and modelling suggests July could be no different. Well, Becky Manton is here. It's slightly worrying from a climate... Finally tonight, the Queen's Baton Relay is on the final stretch of a 90,000 mile journey which has taken it through 72 Commonwealth countries. Its last stop will be in Birmingham later this month for the Commonwealth Games opening ceremony. Well, this morning its arrival was greeted in the southwest of England from where Rupert Evelyn now reports. Oh, it's going to be good, isn't it? Um, that is it for now. Tom will be here with news at 10, but from me and all the evening news team, bye-bye.